Hi guys, welcome to a new video. This time I'm finally showing the face and I'm still a bit awkward here but it's for a good reason because today I'll be showing how I scan and edit my traditional illustrations because some of you have asked how I get those nice clean and white backgrounds and for that we'll be using this tiny illustration here of a little flower because it has a lot of white on the background but also lots of different colors and I want to show you how I edit those as well. So let's go! I use a Canon Pixma TS8350 and this is an all-in-one printer so you can take copies, take prints and also scan images. And to scan I use the software that comes with Canon printers and I use this scan gear tool. I use the advanced settings because I never let the scanner software make adjustments so I can have more control over the colors a bit later. I always scan in 300 dpi because that's enough for me. The only option I live on is this unsharp mask so it keeps the images sharp but yeah the name is a bit counterintuitive and as you can see all the other color settings are disabled. And then I hit preview. And if I'm scanning from a sketchbook, I might have to press it a bit to make it flat. And as you can see, the software didn't adjust the colors, so you can still see the paper and get all the details. Then I select the area that I want to scan. Then I scan the final image. First I start by cropping the image to the size I want. Then I use the patch tool to remove any dirt and dust. I won't pay attention to the background and light levels for now, because if I adjust the levels right away, as you can see, the whole image will be affected and will lose some important color information, so we'll only pay attention to it later. Then I start by adjusting the color balance. This image actually looks good as it is, but sometimes my scanner adds a slight purple tint to images, so I always remove it with the color balance tool. Now I adjust the levels, but I only focus on the colors and simply resist the temptation to get the perfectly white background for now. I also use the brightness and contrast tool to adjust the overall lighting just a little bit. Now I want to show you one of my favorite tools, which is the color replacement. This is really useful when everything looks good, but there's a specific color that's not quite right. So you can use a color picker to select it and then adjust the hue, contrast and lightness. And it's my favorite tool to edit colors because you can make each one look exactly as you want. You just need a little bit of patience. And finally, I use the Curves tool to make some final adjustments if needed. Now I use the Wand tool to select the white background. And you can do this with the Wand tool as well, but I just wanted to show you the Quick Selection tool, because this one is quite useful when you want to add something uh, really small to your selection. So I'm also adding the white from the eyes. Now, with the selection still on, I duplicate the layer and as you can see, I have a new layer only with the white paper from the background and also from the eyes. Then I select this new layer and finally go to the Levels tool and increase the brightness to the top. And as you can see, this doesn't affect the other colors since they're on a different layer. If I hide this layer, you can see the difference from the bottom layer that still has the paper texture. I decided to make the flower just a bit lighter to match the white background. Now, sometimes the edges of your selection don't look that nice, but the good thing about having them on another layer is that they're really easy to fix. And I just use an eraser and remove anything that doesn't look good. And I can also use a regular brush to fix the edges as well. This image is already sharp enough, but you can increase the overall sharpness by using the high pass filter. And for this you just duplicate the layer and you apply the high pass filter. You should keep this value really low so you don't overdo it. 
and after that just set it to overlay. And this is a quick way to make things look sharp. On the other hand, if you don't like textures that much, you can use the surface blur tool and it will make them a lot softer while keeping outlines sharp. This tool is really nice for marker illustrations because you can make the colors a lot smoother. And I hope this video has been useful and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll be glad to help. I wish you an amazing day and I can't wait to see you soon. Bye bye!